I have this feeling that I need to check the contents of my get home bag that I keep in my truck. So come along guys. Hey, hey YouTube, welcome back to Urban Outdoors. Hey, I'm Urban, but you knew that, didn't you? Hey guys, Thank you for coming along on today's video. I know there's a lot of places you could be, a lot of things you could be doing, but you chose to spend your time to watch this video and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider doing so. And if you like this video, at the end, give me a thumbs up. It helps out a whole lot. All right, like I said in the intro, I feel like I need to check the contents of my bug out bag because a couple of weeks ago when I did a video about my uh, how to prep your vehicle, when I got my bug out bag out, it felt a little lighter than usual. And I don't know what's going on with that. Did I borrow something from it and forget to put it back? I don't know. Plus, it's been a while since I've done a bug out bag, get home bag update. And uh, so I'm going to get it out of the truck, go through it, and see if there's anything that I need to replace. It's good to do this periodically because, like I say, sometimes you might borrow from it and not put it back. And uh, for some reason, it just felt light. So here we go. It's in the bed of behind my seat of uh, Truck Norris. Last night was game night. So uh, I've got this is going to be our next game night. We're going to play good old fashioned Clue. And this is my game night mug, which is really awesome. My Viking skull mug, and it's made out of metal too. Uh, pretty cool mug, very detailed. But anyway, that's not why we're here. We're here for this. So let me pop this out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the picnic table and take everything out and see, just to make sure that I have everything that I would need if I am ever stuck in my vehicle and I need to get out or if we're ever at home and we need to bug out in the vehicle this is the bag that stays there so let's go to the picnic table and check it out all right guys I'm gonna make this short because it's like 38 degrees out here but I feel like I needed to do this this is my get home bag aka bug out bag emergency bag whatever you want to call it uh, the brand of the bag, as you can see there, is Redhead. I picked this up from I don't know where and I don't know how long ago. It's been with me for a long time, though. It's a good bag. In the outside pocket here, I have readily, readily available a uh, flashlight. This is called a Pit Bull flashlight. And... Um, it's very bright. This is the, the light that I used back when I used to do home inspections, crawling underneath people's houses. It puts out great light. And let me make sure. Nope, look. I need to replace the batteries. That's why we do this, guys. That is exactly why we do this. I also have in here a headlamp this is one that you clamp onto a cap or a hat like so and then it just has a button that you push and you can see this one is working so at least I still have that one working so the first thing I have right there is light so first thing we learned today need to replace the batteries in that flashlight I'm not going to replace the flashlight because it's a very bright light and I love it and it's very durable. But it's not durable if you don't have batteries, is it? Alright, inside the bag, this bag kind of zips down like this. I like that. You can lay it down and zip it that way or sit it up like this. And I have uh, just a pair of gloves. These are my old motorcycle gloves. Uh, the leather, but they have the protective knuckles right there. 
I've got some kind of plastic or Kydex or something underneath the knuckles there. So on a motorcycle, if you on a motorcycle, if you fall across the road, that's going to save your knuckles. And then they have padding on the knuckles there. So these are back from my old motorcycle days. And I keep them in there because they also make good work gloves. You can use them easily as work gloves. They're very durable. They're leather. They're warm. And um, I don't know. I think some people might overlook motorcycle gloves as work gloves. But they are great for that purpose. So I do have an extra pair of uh, work gloves in here. These are just a, a cheap pair. They're not leather. They do have some type of neoprene on the bottom there. And um, again, um, like I said in my truck prepping video, you want to have enough for two people. Okay, so if it's me and my wife, we'll both have a pair of work gloves. All right, then I'm gonna reach in here. I have a tarp, all right, so that I can use that as ground cover. I could use it as a shelter, uh, whatever. You know all the different needs for a tarp. In here, this is actually a uh, old sleeping packable blanket bag, but in it I have a. Uh, if I can get it out. I have one of the uh, foldable uh, sterno stoves and these are really good. You can use sterno cans but you can also use wood and it's just a, a folding wood stove, uh, metal stove, I'm sorry. And I know there are a lot of different brands and different ones out there on the market but this one's never failed me it was cheap I've had it for since my son was in Cub Scouts um, so I've got in here a little mini tackle box for fishing I've got some fishing lines some hooks some weights some bobbers some jigs a uh, stringer um, you know in case I needed to do some fishing. I have in here a little mini mess kit and uh, it's got one of those little spoon, fork, knife, can opener combination things in it. You can use it as a can opener, bottle opener. It's got a knife, a spoon, a fork, and uh, it's made by X Gear. I don't remember where I got it or how long I've had it. I just keep it in the pot in case my wife and I have to cook something. I should probably put another spork in there. So, flashlight batteries, another spork. Alright, then I have this bag. And I'll be quite honest with you, I don't quite remember what's in this bag. So I'm just going to go through it. But uh, inside, I'm surprised as you are to we'll find out what we got in there. We do have a lensatic compass. Because it's very important if you're going to be bugging out of your vehicle to get home that you have a general direction of where home is. And of course, in my truck, I have a map. So before I left the vehicle, I would uh, grab that map. Uh, in here we have a pair of Tasco uh, binoculars. Um, they're just like uh, eight by 12. Um, no, they're eight by 10, I believe, um, binoculars. I have some hand warmers, uh, quite a few packs of the hand warmers. These things are, of course, you know, good for keeping your hands warm, but they're also good for uh, fire tender. If you, I don't know if you knew that or not, but they are. I've got here a little boo-boo kit with some antiseptic, some burn cream, some goodies, headache powder, 
uh, some bandages, some band-aids, just a little boo-boo kit. Uh, nothing major as far as trauma. Again, I have that in my trauma bag in my truck. So if my wife and I were in the truck and we needed to get out of there, I would probably carry this bag and she would carry the trauma bag since it's, it's lighter. Also in here I have a tin that says repair. This is just an old uh, tobacco tin that I uh, repurposed. And in it I have some super glue, a damn big lighter with some duct tape for multiple uses, fire tender. I have some sewing needles, some electrical tape, some thread, some uh, uh, a sharpie marker, some tweezers. In here I've got a uh, um, some various needles, safety pins, a, a thread, ne uh, a sail needle, so just a little repair kit. Then also I have here um, another little bag that's got some more super glue, some zip ties, and then there's some more duct tape just wrapped around a piece of cardboard there in case I need some duct tape, zip ties, and super glue. But anyway, pretty cool little bag. Also in my bag here, the I have a Catadyne water filter. This will filter thousands of gallons of water. Um, and it's, it's a very good system. You just put your water in here, scoop it out of a stream or a lake or wherever, and then you put that on, and then you just drink straight out of it. So yeah, Catadyne makes good water filters, and that's a good one to have. Uh, also in here I have a folding saw. In case, you know, say something falls across the road or is blocking the road that we need to get through to, I can cut it with this. And, um, yeah, it's a, only been used a few times, but it's a good size, but it folds up nice and safe. I'll put a leather lanyard on there. I have an, uh, Emergency road flare. I have another one of these in my glove box. I keep one in my glove box and one in my uh, get home bag. And then I have the, the knife that I've chosen for this is my Bear Grylls Gerber survival knife. And um, great knife. Oop. Great knife if you can hold on to it. It has a serrated edge and a fixed blade, full tang. It's just a great, great knife. Of course, it comes with a ferro rod here. I keep some uh, Vaseline-soaked tinder right on the back side there. Also, if you unscrap this and open this, it does have a sharpening stone right there for you. So you can keep the blade sharp. Just a, a great survival knife. I've beat this thing to get death. And I know a lot of people don't like Bear Grylls. I'm not crazy about him either. I think he makes some bad decisions in the things that he does on his shows. But his knife has, for me, proven to be very, very useful. And uh, so that's the one that I've chosen to keep in this kit. All right, so that is the inside pocket there. You know what I have noticed is missing? I had a SOG Fusion Tomahawk in here um, to help with processing wood. Now, could I use the saw and could I use the Gerber? Ger could I use the Gerber? Yeah, absolutely. I have batoned a lot of wood with this, but I'd still like to have that Tomahawk. Flashlight batteries? What was the other thing? I've already forgotten.
I'll have to rewind the video to find it out. Something else and put the SOG Fusion Tomahawk back in here. Over here on the side pocket, I've got another little first aid. Uh, that might be a little bit overkill. Two first aid kits or two boo-boo kits. I don't know that I need that, but anyway. On the outside here, I have a whistle. Very loud. Sorry. I wanted to test it though. Uh, over in this side, I have another kit. Again, I just used some electrical tape to keep it. This is a fire kit, okay? And inside of it, I have some pre-soaked Vaseline cotton balls. My favorite fire tender. I also have some quick fire. I've got one, two, three, four of those to help get a fire started. I have some emergency matches in here with a striker. These little kits keep matches dry. Old school, but it works. I have a jeweler's loop, which is a magnifying glass. It's 10 power magnification. So on a bright day like today, I could use it uh, to focus the sun and start a fire. You got to have sunlight for that, though. Then I have a flint match right here. And remember, I already had the damn Bic lighter. But I also have this little lighter. It's a stormproof lighter. It's refillable. It has a little button compass on top. You push the button, and the top opens up, and it is one of those, you can't see the, ah, you can't see the flame, but it's one of those torch flames. It's wind resistant. So, uh, neat little lighter. Oh, also, on the inside there, it's got a mirror, so you could use that to, to help signal. Kind of a survival lighter. I have a little... Ferrocium and ma uh, magnesium rod there. I have this little striker. And then I have a little teeny pocket knife in here just to use as a striker. And I have a couple of little fuel tabs. So this is a fire making. I've got one, two, three, four five different ignition sources and then I also have tinder to help the fire start once the ignition source does its job. So we might be considered crazy by some but preppers will be the ones to survive if and when the shit does hit the fan and this bag uh, as it is right now, weighs right at about 15 pounds. So, I've got the water filter. I have nine bottles of water in the truck, but with the filter, I feel like I'm okay for water in a short-term get-home situation. I've got fire covered. Shelter, if uh, we need to use that tarp for shelter. Oh, what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to do it right now, so hold on. Alright, I'm back. Thanks for sticking around. Right here, I have an extra double-wide hammock. This one I don't really use. It's got the spikes, and it's got the tree straps in it. That, with a tarp over it, would be a better shelter than just a tarp on the ground. So since it's an extra piece of kit that's just sitting in the fox den, I'm going to put it in this bag as well. So fire covered, water covered, cutting implements covered, shelter covered, uh, food. I do have my food bucket in the truck. Uh, we could grab some of the stuff out of that if we had to leave the truck where it is to head home we could take some of that food out of there and put it here because there's still as you can see there's still plenty of room in the top of this bag that i could put some food 
I still have pockets on the side where I could put two or four bottles of water and um, so yeah I think with the basics of survival I have covered in this bag will it be comfortable will it be luxurious no anyway I did learn something on this video I don't know if you guys did or not but I did learn that I need to change these batteries and that's why you have to check your gear periodically yeah guys hey man like I said I appreciate you coming along on today's episode of Arab and Outdoors it's a beautiful sunny but chilly day here mid-January in South Carolina but I've got some awesome videos planned um, I hope you guys will come along for those if you want to know about them after you subscribe click that little bell and then it'll give you an option for all click that and then you'll be notified of all my new videos as they are published I try to do a video or two or three a week and I hope that you'll continue to come along with me so until next time guys keep calm carry on keep it outdoors